What do we got? Nice little male. Not an old dog, but he's not a pup either. Pretty. Nice little poke you made there, Tim. Well, that's a good start to a new video production. Welcome to Varmint Safari 2. Uh, you know, we made the first one, and uh, you guys sent us a lot of nice letters and emails and phone calls telling us how much you enjoyed it, and a lot of you asking when the next one was going to be, so Tim and I decided, against our better judgment, to go ahead and make another one, and uh, we think it's even better than the last one. I think you're going to enjoy it. Let's go get some more coyotes. Let's do it. Another one tried to get downwind of us, huh? Yeah, yeah, I could feel that breeze on the back of my neck and straight up to that coyote. And uh, I didn't have a full view of him even, had an obstructed view. I decided better to put a, a bullet in him a little bit far back than not at all. He didn't get back up, so it must have got the job done, but I could only see the rear two thirds of his body had to move one of the legs of my shooting sticks to get lower and then I could only see part of him. Decided that was the best shot I was going to get so I put lead in him. He didn't go nowhere. We'll get the Fox Pro and I'll go gather him up. young female. Pretty young thing. Hit her right where I figured. Exit right there. Didn't mess her up at all though. She's in good shape. That's 220 long steps. There's some relief to the terrain. It's probably pretty close 200 yard shot. I like these new Howie shooting sticks. They were good. I like them better than them old ones we've been using. Yep. Let's go get you one, Tim.
What a beautiful sight. Beautiful. Let's see. Well, here we are on the very next stand after Tim dumped that one to start the morning. And we've been on this stand for a good 20 minutes already. And we've been playing with this coyote out here for several minutes. I've thrown a lot of sounds at him with the Fox Pro. I've howled at him. And he's just kind of interested. He's not acting real interested, but he is paying attention. We keep messing with him, squeaking at him, throwing sounds. And finally, after about another 10 minutes, he zigzags his way and, and gets up close enough to where I I think I might have a shot now. I'm paying such close attention to him, I never did see that coyote there in that sagebrush until we were watching this film later. Uh, sure wish I'd have seen him when I was out there on the stand. But uh, he, he stood there behind that brush for several minutes and when he finally comes out here, he's acting like he's finally decided he, he's not gonna come any closer and this is about a 300 yard shot I'm about to take here. My first stand of the year on the rifle, actually. And I'm pretty excited. And missing. <laughs> ah, stunk that one up. Never saw the one I should have shot at. Missed the one I should have. And this is a couple stands later. And we have a bit of a rodeo go on here. I'm just going to let you watch it unfold here. Tim's on the rifle. I'm running the camera. Now here in a minute, as this coyote starts getting a little bit closer, you're going to see, I'm going to slow it down for a second, and you're going to see a break in the action. What you're seeing is the camera, the battery dying with this coyote on the way in. And then the camera comes back on. I get it back to life right here. And the coyote gets so far underneath me here, I'm up on a hillside. I can't see him in the camera anymore. I've got to scoot around, change position. Finally get him back on just in time. Well, folks, I kind of pooched it on this stand. I uh, sat down to start filming this and noticed I had a low battery, didn't have a spare one in my pocket. And this coyote you see Tim going down to find right now, battery died when it got up to us and Tim was about ready to shoot. I got the camera to come up back to life for just a couple seconds. I think I captured him hitting it. And then the camera died for good. The battery went dead. And we saw a second one coming. And Tim made a beautiful shot. Drained it out there about 200 yards. But I didn't have any of it on film because my battery was dead. Rats! All right, that's number one. I believe I did get that one before the battery died. 
and battery died just before we saw the second one coming. Doggone it. It's number three for old Tim this morning. Gotta love that. And I've missed one. We're having a great morning. And there's number two. Nice little shot Tim made there. I went and got my laser after the shot. It's 210 yard poke. And it was coming basically right up the same path that first one took. Way both, to go, Tim! Both males, one adult, one probably a year and a half old. Both males. Good shooting, man. We're having a good morning. I'd say. Wish I'd have drained that one I missed, but... Yeah, that's the way it goes, though. Can't well, get them all. Where do we want to take the folks hunting? Well, let's go do a little chuck hunting. All right. Let's do it. We're going to take you on a chuck hunt, folks. Here we are in our usual vermin camp. We got here the night before, drove in in the dark, set up our cots under the stars, slept out in the open. Well, I just love waking up amongst the vermins like this. Nothing better. Here I go, setting up on the first chuck of the day. We're just 50 yards from camp here. Got up, got the coffee going, got out the binoculars and spied this guy. Not a bad little headshot. Yeah. We spend a lot of time looking through our binoculars when we're chuck hunting. We like to get up somewhere where we got a view of as much country as possible and, and, and just sit in glass and spot them from long range and then figure out a way to get closer to them. We get in a lot of good shooting, spending time looking through our binocs like this. And uh, 
doesn't hurt that we get to look at a lot of just gorgeous country as a bonus. Looking thumb shootable, launchable even. Got him. Nice shot. Beautiful morning up here. It's warmed up a little bit. Got maybe even a little too warm. Not seeing as many chucks as we were earlier. We've been seeing a lot, but the shots haven't been real good. We've been seeing a lot of chuck skyline where the shots aren't safe and a lot of chucks just too far early for practical shooting. But uh, we're gonna find some good shooting today. I can feel it. We're, we're seeing enough chucks. It'll get better. Okay, I got the head shot. Wobbling a little bit, but I think I can take him. Definitely took his head clean off. Nicely done. Got him. Okay, Tim, come right from him. See that green tree? See that chuck glowing? Yeah. Hold still. Little low ride it looked like. He's acting funny though. Yep. There he is. Hi. Oh, I better move the camera. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sam, looking beautiful. Beautiful. Let me take him real quick, Tim. You got one in the chamber? Yeah. Oh yeah, I see him now. Hi. That's gotta be about the luckiest chuck around. I don't see him now, do you? Uh -uh. His luck just ran out. Yep. He was a lucky dog there for a while. Got the little one poking up from behind the rock. Wow. That one exited stage left. Get ready. That one is. Get ready. Huh? 
He's getting ready. Yep. He definitely stood up for the squeaker, didn't he? Yeah. Chuck's been playing peekaboo, peekaboo with us, just showing us his head for a little while. The squeaker got him. Nice toss on that one. Yeah, got some air. Had a little bit of rain move through. The sun's coming back out and these chucks are definitely coming out to suck up some moisture. I think we're gonna get some good shooting here in the next little bit. Let's get some more. Working down a little bit. Yep. All right, here he goes. Tossed him, didn't it? I'm looking. Must have been looking at a different one. When I'm seeing running, running. There's one that went down and to the left that I'm still on. Down looking, to the left, he said. Looking good. He's scampering right above that rim rock. We're at from them green trees. Look down further. He's going down, down, oh, down. Yeah, okay, I'm on him. Down. Perched on a perch. Keeps going down toward the 
Bottom. Okay, perched. Yeah. I'm on it. Okay. He really come unglued. Yeah, he did. Sure sounded good. That was good. Who has more fun? I got him. That was a fair poke. 450, you say? 450. Okay, got one out here about 370 days. It's gonna take a poke at. Here we go. He flinched. Still left. Not pretty. Way pretty. Of course, recoil got me completely off him. I'm searching for him again. It's glowing in the sun. Oh, yeah, still. okay. Sure sounded good. That was good. I saw him puff all up. Good way to end the day. Nice day. Beautiful up here. We're back, playing the old Fox Pro with the Jackrabbit. You 
and it don't take long. Who has more fun, Tim? No one. <laughs> no one. Oh, goodness. What a great day, huh? Yeah. First stand, uh, we just made that stand over there where Tim hit, got the, the double and the battery went dead on us. First stand since then. I got a chance to redeem myself on that miss this morning. And we have called five and killed four one o'clock in the afternoon. Looked like a pretty nice yoke. Let me go gather it up. Another male. Four males today. Another sub adult yearling. Yeah, yearling. Got a nice little pelt on him. Youngsters got nicer fur. Well, where to now? Uh, let's go uh, shoot some prairie dogs for you folks. Take you on a Wyoming prairie dog hunting. Hey, with any luck, we'll come back and shoot another coyote today after that. Too much fun. Too much fun. Here we are in Windy, Wyoming, shooting prairie dogs. I'm starting out with my 17 Mach 4. Double. Who 
says 17 calibers aren't any good in the wind. There's a little baby antelope. Not unusual to see them out there early in the year while we're prairie dog hunting. Tim and I have actually seen several being born. Always neat to see them. Switched over my 22 BR right here. Tim's turn for a little action. Tim, see that great big fat one on the second mound from the right? Oh yeah. Oh, 
time for the double. You got him. That was nice. Yeah, it was. Always nice when you can get two with one shot. Look at the fatty. Fatty's still there. Even with this wind, I heard that ferocious report. Wind's a little tricky. Once you figure that out, it ain't too hard to hit. We're back again. Still the same day. Still playing the Fox Pro with the Jackrabbit. We have one come in here. And he's going to streak around on the edge of this flat we're on trying to get downwind. Stop him with the squeaker just in time. For you. It's been a great day. Haven't missed one yet. You're having a wonderful day, Mr. Tim. How many stands since the one I killed? One? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the very next stand. We uh, told the folks that with any luck we'd be back. We're back. This tape's just about empty. I'm going to turn you down. Go get that, that coyote. Where to? Guess we better go rabbit hunting. Show the folks a jackrabbit hunt, eh? got here is your basic infestation. It's a little spot that every couple of years they just migrate in here. We got no idea why this time of year. This snow you're looking at here is 
eight, nine hours old. Look at how, how covered in track it is. Stand right here, we can see bunny rabbits all over the place. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a great day. Right in front of you. Nice shot. Another one trucking off to the right. Same. Another nice shot. Much fun, man. This is what it's all about. Right there, Tim. Two of them lined up for a double practice. Oh, three of them. There's another one, Tim hopping. Ooh. Another foul. Sitting right there. Nice shoot. Lighting them up. That means it's my turn, huh? Yeah. 
absolutely. Sounds good. Lagomorph heaven. Sitting pretty. Down pretty low. Yep. Another fine day of varmint hunting. Good fun. Mucho. Mucho good fun. Old man Winter tried to kick us in the shanks with this wind today. Condition's kind of nasty, but rabbits hopping all over the darn place out here. We're having a ball. I think we're about probably going to run short on ammunition. Have to come back. 
back in a couple days, get some more of this. Man, that jackrabbit hunt was a lot of fun. Can't wait to get out there and do that again soon. Right now, though, I'm going to take you folks on a Utah West Desert coyote hunt. I think you'll enjoy. Saw these big boys driving from one stand to the next. Man, talk about get your heart going. Now, here we are on the next stand. And I want you to watch the way this coyote hits that bush. Watch him hit this sagebrush. female boy we got another comatose on our hands it's like this one caught me daydreaming looking the wrong way how was it looking has she come up at all I was looking out over here where we were set up for it she come back door me, but Tim gave me some warning that she was responding. I got a shot into her. She was leaving. That first shot was a, broke one of these back legs. Wide open. Not a very good shot. And second one, not a whole lot better as far as catching her on the fringe, but put her down. We'll take it. Fox Pro, yeah, we were coming down out of a big draw on a dirt road up here. We we're seeing a lot of coyote crap on the road and black, you know, fresh, not the old ancient stuff. So we parked the truck and snuck over one little ridge. You can see there's no cover out here. Fox Pro helps a lot in a situation like this. You know, I set it out here 40, 50 yards from my hidey hole, which is over here. I think this prairie ghost camel works good too out in this open stuff. Blends in real well when I look at Tim right now sitting up in the brush. He's he's looking pretty well hid. Let's go get another. Tim's turn. I'll take over the camera. And get out his rifle. We'll go get another one for him. Okay, I want to play this back for you. That coyote hitting that sagebrush. What she's hitting is our Fox Pro. I've got it perched up there in that brush right there. And she actually clamps her jaws down on it. Holds on to it for a brief instant and lets it go. That's actually not the first time we've had it happen, but it is the first time we've got it on film. 
Uh, boy, you can't ask for fooling them much better than that. See him? Not anymore. He's up by that gold. Dave and I parked the truck down here. Just walked up this little hill onto this sagebrush flat. Didn't really like the looks of it when we got up here, so we figured we'd make a quick five minute stand. That coyote come right in. Give us a little buzz by and took off. I put lead in the air, it's about all you can do. Let's go get another. Let's do it. Hell, we've only made one stand since you killed that one. Yeah. Two stands in a row, the Fox Pro is drawing them in. They're yeah. biting the Fox Pro today. Literally, that last stand, that coyote bit the Fox Pro. Yeah, he did. Let's go get another. Let's do it. Plenty more out here. I'm preparing our traditional camp meal here. We have uh, T-bones and peppers and onions sauteed in butter on just about every trip we take out here. <laughs> like I say, no suffering. Saute a little onions, peppers, and some butter. Get them tender, throw the T-bones in. No need to suffer out here on these desert trips. that look good? Steaks, peppers, onions, nice full belly sleeping out under the stars. Don't get much better than that folks. Now this next hunt something a little special. It's a high country chuck hunt, a spot we've never been before and it really ended up to be something neat. I think you're gonna like it.
morning. We're up here this morning in this beautiful high country. Let's see if we can find some rock chucks. 110 degrees down in the valley, but it's nice up here. Probably get us some shooting to boot. Got a little bit of a an overcast, a little bit of a sprinkle. I think the sun comes out here in a little bit. We'll find some chucks. This is sure some chucky looking stuff. One on the right, still there. Okay, I got one way right. Having us a nice little morning up here. We're at almost 11,000 feet, 8.15 in the morning. We've already shot four chucks and seen a whole bunch more. We've had to pass on quite a few shots because as you can see, these chucks are tending to skyline and we've had to pass up some shots where we didn't know what was behind it or thought it wasn't safe. We've been around behind this ridge. We know we're safe to shoot here. We're having a good morning. Skyline over here, you can see him with your naked eye, Tim. Coil knocked me back. I couldn't tell. Did I get him? Yeah. Alright. Three for three in this little spot. There's at least a couple more up there. Try for the side of his head. Got it. Absolutely. Too much fun. Too much fun. side of it. Yep. jumped him.
On him? You bet. Fun his world. I can't think of anything better to be doing on a morning like this. Why well, hear you? Is it just beautiful here or what? That's an understatement. One in the middle is looking the best. Yeah. Just the head looking south. Yeah. Oh, uh, he just ducked. But go ahead and get on the rifle. There's going to be something to shoot at up there. Say the one on the left's looking best now. Yeah. Beauty. Beauty. Got the attention of that one on the right. That box is out of ammo. that one to the left or straight over the bush uh -uh. he's right under that notch now he's hopped up straight up there on that red little launch pad oh okay Nicely done. It juiced him up pretty good. Darn good bullets and nozzlers. There's a pika. See a few of them now here and there when you're up in this high country where there's rock chucks, you usually find a pika or two cute little rascals. I can hear a couple whistling over here. Waiting for them to poke their heads back up and then sneak up over here and just let them have it. See him? Yeah. See him come to a stop? Get him. Seven for seven. Oh, little guy's on the launch pad. See that little guy on that launch pad, Tim? Yep. I'll say that was a wow. launch pad. That was a pretty bullet. Hungry bullet. The old Remington's kicking him in the teeth this morning. Eight for eight this morning with it. Gotta love it.
that one. That up here on a green rock. To the left of that like bright yellow stripe. Yep. Yeah, there's three of them on that <laughs> rock. Too. I'd stay down there, Tim. There was three of them on that rock. You'd probably get another shot in just a sec. Just don't want to lose your brass. Still there. Lower launch pad. Looking good by the yellow stripe. Well, ruined my perfect streak, but his luck ran out. You on him? Oh yeah. Oh yeah.
Wow. The old Ackley sure tossed him. Just on our edge of the rocks. See the rock slide, the rock bowl over here? Yeah. He was in those bushes just on our side of the rocks. You see him? Good shot. He's giving us the tail wag. Fatty. You got him. Hi. And he ran up, up, up. Yep. Looking frisky, running up to the salt and pepper rock, on the salt and pepper rock. Got him. Nicely done. Ain't too many of these old chucks escaping us today. Good fun. Good fun. That got him. 
sounded good. It was good. What's that mean? Like 23 for 27? Still killed every chuck I shot at today. Got him. We're out of ammo. But we're not out of chucks. Didn't think there's no way. I, I grabbed 16 rounds. Walked up here. The truck's about a half mile. Pretty tough hike back there. I didn't think we'd have time to shoot that much. It's getting on towards evening. I'm gonna have to sprint back and get more. Good shooting. Believe you got him. Had an awful good sight picture on him. Yeah, he took flight. Right in them rocks. Right where you plugged that second one exactly. Little one? Medium size. Kind of silhouetted against the bush. What's that? Is he kind of silhouetted against the bush? Yeah, that's him. High, I believe. Wow, ripped him in half. Ripped him right in half, jugged him good. Held right in the right, right in the same spot. Put him to sleep. There's a tail wag. Spectacular.
boy what an awesome chuck hunt that was just a great time you know we don't hit those high country spots like that any more often than once every two years we like to let them rest but uh, this coming July it'll be two years since we were up there I'm anxious to get back now let's take you out on a, another jackrabbit hunt this one takes place in January the weather was pretty harsh but the shooting was real good in the snow still coming back down but not like it has been not like it look looks like it's gonna let's go get us some jackrabbits Lighten them up or what? Holy cow. I haven't had shooting this good since, well, since that morning on Varmint Safari 1.
Got one guy showing himself up over here. That's it. Hippity hop, hippity hop, hippity hop, come to a stop. Too much fun. Well, I tell you, I really honestly believe there's just no better way to get tuned up with a rifle than walking around jump shooting these jacks like this. Coyotes seem big and slow after you get used to shooting jacks. Hi. Oh, I see another day, day. on my hands. Not that bad, but you hate dropping your clip in the snow, let me tell you. Oh, got one. 
one sitting right out here, Sam. Now he's hopping towards the other one. They're both hopping towards each other. Okay. I'm hopping towards that dead one. Okay. I'm on the one on the left. I gotta shoot through brush, so I'll come over to the one on the right. You on him? Yep. So was I. Nice. Beautiful. That was just plain pretty. Should be. Love draining them runners. rabbits hopping around in here. Like I say, it's a regular infestation. I took all the ammo I brought with me for this rifle stuff in my pockets, but it's all gone. The rabbit's still hopping all over. We gotta go back to the truck, get Tim back on the gun, load his pockets up, go get him emptied out. <laughs> Nice toss.
run them through the ammo, that's for sure. <laughs> Burning through the jackrabbits too. Really getting into them, I'll say. Last bully. One more. by zillions. Yep. Get up on this knob, gonna get some shooting right here. here. See him and he burned out into that yeah. short, thick stuff. Yeah. Boy, these rabbits are hopping all over out in this sagebrush today. Weather's a little bit fierce. This wind is blowing and it it is cold. I bet it, it's only 20-something you know, degrees without the wind, single digits width. We're having a ball out here walking around jumping these jackrabbits. Right now I'm using my my little 17 Mach 4, just a delightful rifle for this kind of shooting. Walking around jump shooting these jacks, it's got zero kick, very little muzzle blast, very deadly on these jackrabbits, however. I think this might be the ideal jackrabbit rifle, medium weight rifle, 17 Mach 4. Let's go kill some more, Tim. getting burned like crazy out in this low flat stuff. See jackrabbits running off and this is real hard to get a shot at them as they run through this brush. But we've got some open area up there. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a loop out through this and drive them. I'm gonna push them up into that open up there. 
I'm shooting ought to be fast and furious for a couple minutes when I get up here about 600 yards. Tough to hold a rifle steady in this wind, buffeting you. That was a nice little shot in this breeze. Same. Yep. Nice shot. Oh, tough shooting in this wind. It's still fun, but hit percentage has gone way down. That Mach 4 is tearing them up. Yep. Nippy, you say? Yeah. A little bit. How do you like that Mach 4 for this jackrabbit shoot? Pleasant to shoot. It doesn't really tear them up too bad. No. Gets the job done, though.
17 made a pretty good mess of that one. Yeah, it kills them just fine for such a mild-mannered little cartridge. Pleasant shooting little gun. I like it. Who says you can't use your deer rifle for rabbit hunting? Well, 270's doing them up nice. Sure is. And it's done many, many, many of them up nice over the years. Beautiful, Tim. That was just a nice shot. I hope you folks enjoyed that jackrabbit hunting. That action sure was fast and furious. Dave and I, we really enjoyed jackrabbit hunting. Now we're going to take you on another quick couple of little coyote hunts here. you're gonna see when you're calling coyotes. No kidding. Six six point bull elk come trotting through the stand. We've called in everything over the years. We've called in elk, deer, antelope, mustangs, cattle, jackrabbits, uh, deer, you name it. We've called it in at one time or another. Here we are a couple stands later. Tim's running the camera. I'm on the rifle. Calling with the Fox Pro.
It's a heavy rascal. Pretty too. It's just a, a gorgeous coyote. Should have had his partner. Tim and I have made this stand before. In fact, Tim killed a, an old three-legged female the last time we made this stand. You'll see that on the film here, but that was a year ago. This guy come in pretty quick, the old Fox Pro. Flared off, I'm not sure if he just decided he wasn't sold anymore or maybe saw me moving. He trotted out there pretty fair ways and I thumped him just right. That bullet went in right around there. Didn't come out. Put him down for the count. Second one's coming about a minute later and I blew it. I shouldn't have shot at that coyote. It was facing us. And when they're facing you like that, they're almost always going to come closer. But I just made what I thought was a, a more difficult shot. And I, I thought I was going to drop it, so I took the shot. Got one of the two, anyhow. It's a beauty. It's going to make a nice pelt. Too much fun. like to take a minute to talk to you folks about the Fox Pro. I bought my first Fox Pro shortly after they came out some years ago and I was immediately sold on it. Uh, the, the size, the, the weight, how easy it is to use, uh, the remote control, how, how handy that is in setting up a stand to where when a coyote shows up he can't leave. Uh, and just plain results. We called in a bunch of predators with the Fox Pro. And uh, as much good as I've got to say about the unit, I've got even more good things to say about the company and the people that stand behind this product. Fox Pro, the folks at Fox Pro, uh, John and Mike Dillon, the owners, just first class people all the way. They've treated me just exceptionally well through the years. Here recently, they asked me to become a, a field staffer for them, join their field staff. And of course I accepted and, and I'm just honored to be part of the Fox Pro family now. You folks looking to get an electronic call, I'm usually not one to, to hawk products to say buy this or buy that, but you call the folks at Fox Pro, get you a Fox Pro. You'll be glad you did. Wonder what the old ancient hunters would have thought of the Fox Pro. Here we are shooting prairie dogs and Tim's getting after him with my 6mm Ackley. Bad morning to be a prairie dog.
Gosh dang. <laughs> Even with fire forming loads, that 6mm Ackley sure is rude on them. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, blowing out there in the brush. Yep. another knocked him over it's too much fun Nice shot. He got a little air time. Yeah, he did. He did, and that was every inch of 350 yards. Balloon. Balloon. Good night, Grace. I'm not mistaken, there was. him pretty good. Yeah. Turned him into a flying carpet. That rubbed him. So <whistles> oh That got him. <whistles> Need to let this barrel cool. <laughs> Too much fun. Too much fun. This uh, 6 mm Ackley is rude to these prairie dogs. It really turns them into flying carpets. Need to let it cool off though, it heats up fast. Boy, hard to let it cool with the prairie dogs running around like that. Chunked him pretty well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Nice toss. Beauty. You got him. Nice toss. That other one's sat up even prettier. Nicely done. Nicely done. A little 20 doesn't toss them real well, but yeah, it's easy to shoot them with. While we're letting that 6mm Ackley barrel cool, we pulled out this, this rifle. This is a 20 BR, 20 caliber. It's the BR case neck down to 204 and it's spitting out these little 32 grain VMAX at 4,500 feet per second. Real easy to hit the Prairie Dogs with it. It's just incredibly flat and uh, no recoil at all. You see it all through the scope. Doesn't toss them, you know, up in the air in big chunks, send them to the moon in a thousand pieces like that bigger gun does, but sure is fun. Sure is fun. In this next scene, we try to show you what it looks like from the prairie dog's point of view. Dave and I snuck the camera right out into the prairie dog town and came back and shot him. Turned out kind of neat. I think you'll like it. Shooting those prairie dogs, now that's good clean fun. So's coyote hunting. Let's take you back out and do a little more coyote hunting. Private property, sportsmen welcome. Environmental maggots keep out. That's my kind of landowner. You gotta love the West, I'm telling you. Not a lot of private property out here, but not usually a problem to call where it is private. Tim made a nice recovery right there. Dropped that coyote about 180 yards on the dead run. This coyote's a little bit different than usual. It's an old female missing a hind leg above the knee there. And uh, later on, off camera, we made the 
rather exciting discovery that she wasn't dead either. Uh, wish we'd have had the camera going for that. We just got all set up, sat down, had the Fox Pro put out, getting ready to start this stand. Hadn't actually started to call yet. And these guys showed up, and boy, what a sight, I'm here to tell you. Look at all these big bowls, one after the other. This is on a different trip a few weeks later, and this is the very first stand ever made with uh, my 17 Mach 4 using the Fox Pro, and it don't take long. First coyote for the 17. Nice shot. Pretty male. Not too old. Excellent shape. Boy, he was sold, wasn't he? Coming in hard. Nice shot with that little 17. Yeah, took him with one of these little rascals, 17 Mach 4. Matter of fact, this is the first stand we've made with this rifle. Just pulled it out and said we got a coyote virgin on our hands. Not anymore. Too much fun. Let's go get you one, Tim. Let's do it. Up next, we got a couple quick chuck hunts. First one is me and Tim, and the second one is, is me and my friend Dave. I always get a big kick out of hunting with Dave. I think you guys will too.
this is a spot we've been hunting for years and years shooting chucks here but like all spots in this high country like this we we don't hit it any more often than once every two years a lot of times we'll give it two full years of rest between hunts Austin. Two sixty eight. Okay. He's dead meat. He's right on the edge, huh? Yeah. That's 368. I'm going to kill him. You ready? Yeah. Oh, you got him. <laughs> that was the, the king rock chuck. That's the biggest chuck I've ever seen. It's a big chuck. That thing was huge. 368 it's yards. Like now you see his, his tail flapping. Oh, okay, that one's a different one. Okay. Oh, there's two. Yeah, there's two. I'm gonna there's go for that one. one. Splatter him on the rocks. Yeah. Right? He'll hold still. I think you got him. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. That was beautiful. There's our new Fox Pro Jack in the Box decoy. You can see thrashing around there out in front of me. We've been using it for just a few hunts now uh, at the time we filmed this. Our camera has been out to lunch for most of those hunts. This first stand where we actually had the camera working and everything came together to get some footage. Now this coyote saw me moving the camera and flared off, but watch what he does. Statue. Turns into a statue, not looking at me, but looking at the decoy. Tim does the deed on him. And that's pretty typical of what we've been seeing using this decoy. Coyotes just, uh, we've had several see us move and they stare at the decoy instead of staring at us. Coyote seemed to like that jack in the box. Pretty little male. Yeah, he was mesmerized. mesmerized by that jack in the box. Good deal. Little male. Nice white belly. Saw a ton of sign walking in here. Had a good feeling about this one. Very good. Track all over the ground. Let's go get you one. Let's do it. Here we are on a different earlier trip before we started using the, the decoy. Wish we'd have had it on this stand. I'd have been interested to see how this coyote would have reacted. Well, there's another one that never knew we was here, thanks to our prairie ghost camo. To thank those guys from Montana Camo Company. This stuff seems to work really well in this open country. That one was about to run Dave over. Nicely done. Yeah. Thought that one was going to run you over. Yeah, pretty adult male. Yeah, I let him get right almost into my lap before I dropped the hammer on him. It's fun. It's fun. Seen him coming. Seen his head come up over the horizon. Hit mute on the Fox Pro. He kept going in a line for the Fox Pro, so I gave him a little... He changed course and came straight for me. I just followed him in the scope until he was filling it, decided that was close enough. Love this 17 Mach 4. Not a mark on this coyote. Fox Pro. Awesome. Awesome. Let's go get you one, Tim. I'm hip. During that last scene, I shot that coyote with, with my 17 Mach 4 here. You heard me talk about this rifle a little bit back when we were shooting jackrabbits. I, I got this rifle built last year, got finished late last winter. It's been absolutely my favorite rifle ever since. Um, I've been using it for just about everything. Uh, prairie dogs, shot some rock chucks with it, bunch of jackrabbits, quite a few coyotes. Um, it's built on a Short action Remington, uh, Remington Classic, I bought one of the fireballs, had it turned into a Mach 4 repeater with a Lil barrel. kept the, the Classic stock. Um, I wish we could have showed you more coyote kills with this rifle on the, on the video here because this has become my favorite coyote rifle 
it's just extremely kind to the fur. Uh, it puts them down hard. I haven't had to uh, have lost one with it yet, but it puts an area mark on them. Those coyotes look like they went to sleep. Sometimes it's hard to even find where they've been hit. Just great for, for fur hunting. Uh, I do have a friend here in Utah, Blaine Eddy. He's a commercial fur hunter. He takes 100, sometimes more than 100 coyotes uh, under the gun to the call every year for the commercial market. He uses a 17 almost exclusively. He's killed over a thousand coyotes with a 17 caliber. Here a few years ago, he, he shot some video footage with a camera mounted on his rifle uh, just for himself and, and friends. But he's been kind enough to let me include it here on the video, let us show you uh, Blaine taking a few coyotes with a 17 caliber. So let's watch that. Time away is a monster. Look at the size of that coyote. That is unbelievable. That is just unreal that a coyote could get that big. <laughs> I hope he paired up with something, made a lot of little puppies that they'll be as big as him. Ian drilled him right in the side of the chest. He ran about, oh, I guess about 10 feet and folded dead. 17, 25 grain burger out of the contender. We didn't get the other dog. It got the hell out of there, but. Good shot, Rick.
Well, we'd like to thank Blaine for letting us show you that footage. Now, he's got a, a commercial video out on skinning and caring for coyote furs. I think it's the best on the market. We're going to put that information on how to get that up at the end of the video here. Now, let's me and Dave, we'll go out and shoot a couple of our own coyotes. coyote come in, got up the hill and got downwind of us, decided he was going to turn around and head the other way. Bad mistake. Hats off to coyotes. May they live long and prosper. Pretty dog, where'd you hit him? Keister. Leaving, huh? Old veteran. Oh yeah, look at them teeth. Yeah, that's an old campaigner there. He's been around a while. Yep. We'll skin him. Give him proper respect. Yep. Now, Tim's running the camera on this one. I got the rifle, and I just decided to let this coyote come as close as he wanted to, just so we could get the footage. Probably should have just killed him out there 50 yards. You believe that? Gosh. It wanted to come. <laughs> that was a mistake. It just about run me and Tim over it. And it, it when it got right up to us, it just kind of stood here for a sec, getting kind of aggressive at us. It's, it's cool. Wish I'd have killed him.
some of you that have our first video might recognize this stand. for that new sound we captured to pay <laughs> off, did it? Sure didn't. First stand, 90 seconds into it, had a pair coming. Yeah. Oh, God, I love it. I do love it. Why don't you go gather that guy? Here about Three weeks ago, two weeks ago, Tim and I recorded Jackrabbit in distress, and we this is the first chance we've had to use it. The sound we recorded, we put it on the Fox Pro, and uh, called in a pair, and Tim dumped one of them. Let's say the local coyotes like the sounds of the local jackrabbits. We sent this sound to Fox Pro. I don't even know what they're going to call it, but they're they're putting it on callers for people now. If you guys want this sound, you just call. Mike Dillon at Fox Pro, tell him you want the Varmint Safari Jackrabbit. He'll oh yeah, yeah, that's... He's been four, around a yeah, while. four or five year old coyote right there. Beautiful. Make a nice fur. Red Fox. Nice. Boy, that is highly unusual. Three o'clock in the afternoon. Bright, bright sunshine. Red Fox come in. We set up just under this little brow of a little hill here. Looking out here with the breeze in our face came from around it and this guy come around the other side about 10 minutes into the stand we were getting pretty late in the stand and he went almost right up to the collar caught some breeze and bolted out like lightning I was lucky I nailed him in the tailpipe running straight away out there about 80 yards at full speed using that jackrabbit distress sound again the same one we used this morning for that pair First day of field testing it, I'd say it works. I mean, calling in a red fox in the middle of the day to a jackrabbit. Who'd have thunk? We'll take him though. Well, that new sound that we recorded for Fox Pro has really been a producer. That's been that's become our go-to sound since we recorded it last winter and we've killed a lot of coyotes with it. Now what do you say we take you on one more prairie dog hunt?
back in beautiful, windy Wyoming again. Got them two kids on that mound. Let's see if I can make one of them fly. Tossed him nicely. Got one on all fours. Yep. Rugged him. And one still pegging. I got him. Pull up. You got a pretty big one if you come left from that, Tim. In the grass. Yeah, off the right tip of that lone mound down there. Sure do, Sam. Got a little guy right out in front of us here. I think we'll give him a pass. He's too close. All right there. Yeah. He's dead. Here's another one from the prairie dog's point of view.
slowly yeah. pan them up. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Well, folks, that about wraps up Varmint Safari 2. Dave and I really enjoyed making it. We sure hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks again, and good luck in your varmint hunting. Yep, maybe we'll see you out there sometime. But it, 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 it's all, folks! <laughs> <laughs> Learn more about Fox Pro on their website or by giving them a call. Good folks to deal with. Our Prairie Ghost Camo sauce wearing in the video is by Montana Camo. You can learn more about them at their website or give them a call as well. Doggone good shooting bags. Uh, that's a shooting bag you saw us using on the chuck hunts. Man, those are some good bags. You can check them out on the web or call. AllPredatorCalls.com. They carry all kinds of stuff for predator hunters. You can get our videos and you can also get Blaine Eddy's Hunting and Skinning for Profit at AllPredatorCalls.com. Sly Dog Custom Calls. Sly Dog makes some gorgeous little antler and horn predator calls. Jason Lamar makes some, some beautiful wooden calls out of exotic woods. You can get a hold of him. And don't forget our website. You can get a hold of us there. Uh, if you've got any questions about anything you've seen on the video, we've got articles, we've got links to varmint hunting sites on the, the web. It's a good resource for you. Uh, like I say, any questions, just give us a holler.